Okay, so we have a user requested video. Shout out to Brother Russ. He has a Roland FAO6 and he has an MPC Live 2. And he's trying to learn how to use both of those together. He's been having some issues. So, you know, even though Bishop Bolo is a little under the weather, there's nothing that he will not do for any of his congregation members. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and show you guys how to hook everything up together. And I'm gonna show you guys how to actually use these together so you won't have any issues. So let's go ahead and get to that right now. Bolo! Now, before we get started, the Roland FAO 6 and the MPC Live 2 is available at Zounds.com. Zounds.com has a whole bunch of stuff on the site that you guys can get without no credit or background check. Now, it's not going to be the Roland FAO 6 and the MPC Live 2, so it's not everything, but it's a lot of stuff. So you can go ahead and order the stuff. They'll ship it to you, and you can just make equal monthly payments. All you have to do is have a credit or debit card on file and that's pretty much it so if you guys need any equipment right now make sure you guys go ahead and click my link in the description and head over to zounds.com and get you some equipment today all right so i'm gonna go ahead pick up my iphone and i'm gonna show you guys exactly how i connect everything together and show you guys the different ways you can work with the Roland fao6 and the mpc live 2. so let's go ahead and get to it all right first things first we have to hook everything up you got to make sure that you got the power cables in because some of you guys have actually hit me up saying stuff doesn't work and y'all don't even have the power cables plugged in. So make sure you have that plugged in. From the Roland FAO6, I got the outputs going into the inputs of the MPC Live 2. This is one of the easiest ways to do it. Or you can have the outputs go into a mixer or something like that. But I actually like running mine inside of the MPC so you can go ahead and use the preamps and everything and use that MPC sound of your Roland running into it. And then I have the outputs going into my uh, speaker select. You can run these into your audio interface or a mixer. Just something so you guys can hear it through your speakers. That's all. Now we got to hook this thing up via MIDI. As you guys can see, I have the USB cable plugged in and that is for my MIDI. My MIDI is coming in from the back of the FAO6 and it is running into the MPC. Now you can use the regular MIDI cables that plug into here, but it's just so much easier using the USB MIDI. So much easier. Now for some of you guys who ask on a regular basis, can you use audio via the USB cord? No, as of December 2023, that's not available on the MPCs. Hopefully they will add that in there at some point. But as of right now, you cannot pass audio via USB yet. Hopefully. All right. So if we got everything hooked up the right way, we can easily go right here to menu. We can go right here to preferences and then we can go to MIDI sync right here. And as you guys can see, it shows the FAO6, FAO8 MIDI 1 and the FAO6, FAO8 MIDI 1 on the input ports and on the output ports as well. And just make sure this stuff is turned on the track. You don't have to turn all of these on like that, but I just like to turn them on either way. But, you know, on your outputs, you really just need to focus on the FAO608 MIDI 1, okay? So I just turned all this other stuff off because we don't really need all that right now. Now, on your FAO6 or your FAO8, you're going to need to turn the local switch off, which... Most of you guys know as local control, but these newer keyboards call them the local switch. All you have to do is go right here into menu. It's going to take you right over here. Just go to system, press enter. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use these little things right here. We're going to toggle over. And then we'll go right here to where it says sound. And as you guys can see, I already have it turned off. If it's just turned on, all you got to do is just take the little, the little jog wheel right here. And then you can go ahead and turn that off right there. So make sure that that is turned off. Okay. Very important. Okay. So now that we got everything pretty much ready to go, what we need to do is when we go into a new sequence, we need to go right here, click on the little MIDI right there. And it'll show you all of this right here. We're going to go to MIDI port and we're going to select the Roland FAO6 FAO8 MIDI one right there. 
okay? And now I'm going to show you guys how to do it the more traditional way to how to select sounds and everything. So this is going to be very easy. All right, so right now on my keyboard, as you can see, I have it as a user um, initialized studio right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a studio set. So if you press the split and dual on here together, it turns it into a studio set. So let's press both of those together. Both of the lights will pop up. And as you guys can see, there it is. So now I have access to all 16 of my MIDI tracks. So if you keep going all the way down, you will see the 16 MIDI tracks. And then that way we'll have everything separated. You have to do it this way. You have to set it up like this, or you have to set it up either in sequence mode or in mixer mode. You have to have it like this, because if not, if you leave it the other way, when you go back to use MSB and LSB or try to select sounds, it'll cut it off and you'll lose all the information. So just go ahead and do the studio set way. It makes things a lot easier to do it that way. Okay, so we got all of that set up. We have a known issue that has been a problem to a lot of you guys when you try to plug things in directly to your inputs on the MPC Live 2. And that's when you have everything plugged in and you try to play the keys, you hear absolutely nothing, nothing. And why is that? Because the input is not turned on. And even though it's turned on on here, and even though if I use my MPC X or my MPC SC, it works perfectly fine, but some reason on these MPC Live 2s, <laughs> it just has this problem over and over again. A lot of times people go right here into the audio and as you can see, it's turned off and all that stuff like that. Yeah, I understand that, but I'm going to show you guys the easiest way to get this thing working. All you got to do is go right here, click on that, and you got to go right here to monitor. We turn monitor in. You don't even have to arm that. Just turn the monitor in and you should be fine. What we can do now is we can go back to our main screen, go back to MIDI, and then we just have to arm the track right here, make sure that track is armed. Once we get that track armed, now we can play the keys. And there it is, we have sound, that easy. Now that we got that done, we can go through the old school way and just pick our sounds by scrolling through the sounds on the actual keyboard. Now, we can go ahead and scroll through the sounds like this, or we can go to a specific bank, like we can go to orchestra right here. We can select on that, and then we play it. So we can select sounds like that. And then say, for instance, we have a sound on track one, there we go. And then now what we can do is we wanna to go to another sound. We just go to track two right here. We change that MIDI channel onto two. So make sure that MIDI channel is on two. And then we just select our FAO six. And then from here, what we gotta do now is we have to scroll down because it's not a touch screen. And then we can select our sounds. Like right now it's on nice piano. <music> So that's done. And then if we want to add another sound to this, we can go to track three. We can hit MIDI channel three. So now we go to MIDI channel three. We're going to change that to three. And then we're going to go right back here to the Roland uh, FAO6. And then right now we're going to go to MIDI channel three on here. We're going to scroll down to this. And we're going to change this into another sound. Let's, let's go to like a brass or wind sound. Two trumpets. Let's use that. And we play it. And then there you go. So you have to make sure on each track you have the corresponding MIDI set up to go with it. Okay, so you have to have that. So we go back to track one and we play track one. It's going to play the strings. And then we're going to go to track two, which is on MIDI channel two. We have that set up with the nice piano right there on channel two. And then when we go to MIDI channel three, we have that set up on the keyboard on channel three, we have that set up as two trumpets. All right, so now, say for instance, we made a whole track using these sounds and we wanna save these sounds for later on just in case we wanna add more stuff to it. 
Now, the only way you're gonna have to do this is you're gonna have to save these inside of the keyboard. So what you can do from that point is hit right, right here, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna save a studio set. Once you save the studio set, you're gonna press enter, and then you can name the studio set. What I tell people a lot of times is, name it the exact same name that you would name the session on the MPC. That's the best way to do it. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and do it the way that I like to do it, and that is using the MSB and LSB banks. It's so much easier to do it that way, and if you wanna save your session, you don't have to save everything on the keyboard and on the MPC separately. You can just save it via the MPC and everything will pull up every time you open up a session. All right, it's very easy to do this. So right now we are still in our studio set, still in the studio set, and all we simply have to do is go right here to track one. We're in track one right now. We're in the Roland FAO6. What we're gonna do is go to program change right here. We're gonna turn that to where now, we turn that on, you'll see the uh, the bank MSB and the bank LSB. So you have to make sure and turn this on. So it's off right now. You turn that on, boom, there it is. From there, what we can do is we cycle all the way up to 87. This is gonna be a start for you guys. Um, you can actually go online and you can see all of the MSB and LSB values. So that way you can go ahead and pick, you know, whatever sounds. But I just know it starts right here. So now we go to 87. And then we can go to 64. So we go to 87 and 64. And then we play the note. And then... When we go to the program changes, when we change the programs on here, when we change it, and when we change it, every time we change the program, it's gonna automatically change it on here as well. So look at that. So when we change that program, the corresponding numbers, 14, and then we keep changing that, and as you guys can see, it will change it for us on the keyboard. So now we play it. So say for instance, we like that sound right there. What we can do now is we can go to track two, put that on MIDI channel two, because now we're using a separate track. We turn this back on again, and then now we can go to 87. All right, go to 87, 64. And you can already have this pre-programmed and everything like this. You can have your own like things set so so you don't have to do this every single time. So let's go to, instead of going to uh, 64, my bad, instead of going to 64, let's go to 65. And then let's see what that plays. So we're on MIDI channel two. It plays a distorted guitar. So let's go through and cycle through some of this stuff. So we're gonna go through the program change right here. And we're gonna do that. We'll go through the program change. And as you guys can see, it is cycling through it. And let's see here, that's a bass. Let's try that. All right, so we got that sound. And then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select another sound and then we're gonna go to track three. And then we're gonna put that on MIDI channel three. And then we're gonna turn this on. We're going to 87. We're gonna go to, let's say, we're gonna go to MSB 66. And then let's play this. What's this called? Harmon Mute. And then let's change these a little bit. Let's just see what other sounds they got. Let's go ahead and change these values. And when I change that, it changes the values with it. So let's go to a brass attack. All right, so I hope you guys got that. I know I went through a lot very fast, but if you just kind of just see what I was doing, it's not that hard to do it. And I hope, Brother Russ, I hope you get it. I hope everything works out for you. If not, just go ahead and email me again. It's all good. Bishop Bolo is here to help. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys learned something from it. And like I always say, peace out.